Can you hear me? Uh, hello, everyone. I should say shalom and boker tov. And I'm delighted to be back in Israel. I don't know where my slides are. It would be helpful to get them up. Let's see. That's a lot of clicking. <laughs> anyway, so I, I am delighted to be here uh, in, uh, in the uh, longevity startup nation of Israel. Last time I was here as a CEO of, uh, uh, of Octoscope, <coughs> visiting customers, and in fact, our wireless test products are still being used here by Intel and Bezek. And today I'm here as a managing partner of Quadriscope Venture Fund, investing into early stage companies that are working to dramatically extend human health span. That's what we do. We, um, we're very fortunate to have an amazing team here. Uh, my partner, uh, Dr. Navarro, is responsible for collecting and analyzing most of the data I will be presenting here. Now, three of our advisors are Israeli, Nir Carmela and, and Miru, who's a venture partner. And that's not by accident. Uh, Israel is a nation of tremendous talent, intelligence, and industry and enterprise. And Quadroscope will be focusing on finding that talent and funding and enabling companies. Uh, Keep going. So um, Dimitri just talked about trillions of dollars, 33 trillion, I think, in 2028. That's that's an entire big market with fintech and, and everything else around it. Now my partner Jose just took a look at very direct spending. The uh, aging population spends money. And what do we spend money on? Mostly on diseases. And so these numbers, by the way, our slides are live. So if you'd like a copy, uh, I am happy to provide. You can click on a lot of links here almost on every slide and go to the backup numbers. And so what we took is just, let's say, diseases and things like cosmeceuticals, right? So if we are able to bring the technology that truly reverses our biological age, we're not going to be spending money on cosmeceuticals. We're not going to be spending money on cancer. We're going to spend money instead on proactive medicine that keeps us young. And so we just took and added up these numbers and they add up to, we can put our finger on a trillion dollars. It's probably a very conservative number. In fact, this number doesn't even include hospital stays. These numbers, even for diseases, don't include hospital stays, just pure treatment. And so what this means is we, we're not going to spend money on hospitals if we stay biologically young and healthy. So. So this is kind of the idea for longevity biotech industry. Okay. So in response to that, we see some investment, and this is significant investment. Okay, if you look at let's say 2021, right, we see about seven billion dollars invested, and a total biotech investment is around 40 billion dollars. So this is 18 percent of all biotech investment. That's a very big percentage for a tiny little nascent industry. And, and this continues. Many of you probably know Altos, $3 billion invested on cellular reprogramming. So uh, much of these, and by the way, these are also live. You can, you can click on some of the links and, and see all the details of the deal. So this is real stuff. A lot of this investment is made by wealthy individuals. And we actually made a list of them, and you, know, you can see who's who, you can see uh, Jeff Bezos, Yuri Milner, Sam Altman was just in the news uh, for renewal bio investment of $80 million. And Dimitri, you are on here too, <laughs> you're right here uh, as well. So uh, I am very grateful for all of that, which people are enabling and fueling this young industry. And. Um, a lot of us are, right now I am in my 60s, and, and a lot of us are really racing against time to stay healthy. Because what's the life expectancy speakers were saying earlier on, it's in the 70s in the United States. So how much time do I have without inter intervention? I'm going to be gone in 10, 20 years. 
So yeah, we need to do something about it. This is a plot that's commonly brought up. It shows an exponential increase in the risk of dying versus age. Right? Nothing new here. But as I was looking at this plot, it occurred to me there is another exponential function that's re related and relevant here. And that is the longer we live, uh, we have an exponential increase in our intelligence and resourcefulness and creativity. And so just as we uh, get to that stage of life where we have all this experience, uh, we're being taken out. And that's a tragedy. And so if we can keep ourselves alive and taking advantage of this exponential increase in our industry and, and intelligence, we can completely change the world, a completely different world. And so here's another, not that we need more proof, but uh, this is a, a very interesting cool study. It takes advantage of machine learning to analyze about 3 million cases uh, of disease showing the age at which uh, disease happens. The onset of diseases, you can see they're in the 70s, some of them are a little earlier. 3 million, uh, only machines can take that big a number and classify it into different categories. And that's an interesting, interesting piece of data. But even without this data, we kind of know uh, what's going to happen with age. And, and with me, uh, about five years ago, I realized that I'm getting to an age where I'm going to get some terrible disease. And electrical engineering is not going to help me. And doctors are not going to help me because, you know, we consider it normal. Well, it's aging, you know, let's just prepare and get our wheelchairs in order and, you know, get nursing homes built up, let's invest in that. And that's kind of a depressing thing to think about, uh, but the doctors aren't going to help you. And so I began to realize and say, I better go back and study some biology. That's my user's manual for my own body. And so as I was exploring all that and, and browsing the web and learning a lot and taking classes, I came across Aubrey de Grey's lecture uh, in, at Google in the UK, and it's just as relevant today as it was in, the 2000, in 2014 when he gave it. And it really turned around. It's much more exciting to be thinking about, well, let's fix the damage that accumulates in our bodies as we age. Let's fix that damage and get ourselves to a younger biological stage instead of preparing to deal with some disease, and maybe I don't need to deal with the disease anymore. Uh, and so that kind of turned me and focused me on this longevity space. So looking at a little bit of history, uh, Aubrey published his first paper with a team of scientists from SENSE back in 2002. This is about two decades ago. Uh, and this paper is a precursor to the hallmarks of aging, which probably most people here know uh, what these are. These are the damage types that Aubrey was the pioneer that basically defined seven damage types and said if we fix them, we just focus on fixing them, that's a lot easier than finding treatments for hundreds and hundreds of these age-related diseases. We don't have to tackle them all the time. These damage types are the root cause. And that was the very first time someone started thinking that way. Uh, Ten years later, Hallmarks of Aging paper followed, defined nine hallmarks of aging, and 10 years hence, just this year, we get a revision of this Hallmarks of Aging paper, which increased the number of hallmarks to 13. Uh, these are the people who did the work. So they pioneered basically this rejuvenation, this longevity biotech field. This is Aubrey's team here, and this is the team that created the Hallmarks of aging papers, and if I could figure out how to write this, right there. Okay, so you can see again, we have uh, in the square brackets references, it's the very last slide, you can go in and click on links to pull up this paper. So this is who, who is who in the longevity space today. And, uh, let's see. Okay, so just as a review, these are the 13 hallmarks of aging. So that's the standard now. Uh, this, and, and these are original uh, seven uh, 
Aubrey likes to call them seven deadly things, and, and it's a very good paper, it's still very relevant, and, and the nice thing that Aubrey's team did is because they defined these seven deadly things, they also defined how we can go and fix them. Uh, and that's really the most important thing. So, all marks of aging, what are they? They're defined by three things. They advance with age. They just advance. We, we, we even we do nothing, we live the, the best lifestyle, we exercise, we eat right, we sleep, we don't have stress, we have a great family. We're gonna, they're going to be advancing, maybe slower if we do everything right, but they're advancing. And if we, uh, we can accelerate aging by basically accentuating these hallmarks. And one example of that is about 10 years ago, Judy Campisi and some scientists from the Mayo Clinic, they experiment with mice, they took senescent cells, cellular senescence here, and they increased a lot of senescent cells, and they, they demonstrated they accelerated aging very dramatically. And then when they removed senescent cells, they, they were able to reverse aging. That was the first time we could see a hallmark in action. Uh, and of course, the most important one, the last one, is we can decelerate, stop, or reverse aging by treating these hallmarks. And that's what we need to do. That's what this industry is all about. Let's forget about disease, not forget about it, of course, but let's treat the root cause. Let's not wait to get these diseases so we have to treat them. We shouldn't have to treat them in the first place. As we age, it's kind of like, this is Aubrey's example, I'm gonna steal it again, kind of like a car, you know, we, we maintain our car, we change the oil. Over time, there are rusted cables, we replace them. The battery, you know, doesn't crank over that much anymore. You know, we, as it ages, we have to change it. So there's a whole lot of maintenance we do and we can keep our cars running indefinitely. So why not? Do the same thing for our bodies. And so I have only five minutes and I, I have here just examples of companies. So we are a venture fund and we talked to a lot of companies and they're arranged here by hallmarks. There are just a few examples, not an exhaustive list. Uh, the ones we marked with the little leaves that are on our logo are the ones we've invested in. Uh, so, for example, I did mention cellular senescence, that, that is the low hanging fruit. Today, this is the treatment that's coming our way. Uh, a lot of folks are already using us, uh, and, and it will have a broad, significant impact on aging. Uh, deciduous, for example, uh, treat senescent cells, and, and they have developed a way to enable our immune system to get rid of them, which is the way nature intended us to get rid of them, more precisely by uh, enabling the natural killer cells to recognize them. Uh, some of the early uh, senolytic treatments killed too many cells that shouldn't be killed. So kind of like cancer would kill too many good cells. Um, and so, um, uh, so they have a much more precise uh, way to do it. Uh, we have lentil bias, somebody mentioned and we chatted at the break. Uh, they're a, a, a nice little company that can restore the flexibility in our lens just by clearing some of the junk from the lens, some of the proteins that accumulate. And, and uh, as we age, we need reading glasses because our lens can't focus on near, so they can solve that. So just some of the, um, the real interesting examples. And of course, um, okay. and these companies, of course, also have uh, diseases. We treat the, the hallmarks, we're going to treat diseases. We can treat any number of diseases. They just have to pick some diseases to get to market and to generate revenue. So, so these companies are biotech companies, but they have this enormous adjacent market. This is a market of proactive medicine. This is a market in which all of us over 40 are customers uh, and, and that we will, that once enabled, we will all use. So these are not just biotech companies. These are, this is a very exciting market. It is the biggest market of all time. And uh, we would like to enable it. Some of the uh, companies are platforms and biomarkers. They support these biotech companies that treat biomarkers. For example, Cosmica 
uh, accelerated drug discovery. And what do they do? Someone mentioned human organoids today will go through and torture a lot of animals. But it turns out not to be very effective. A lot of the treatments on animals don't translate into humans. Uh, Cosmica works with human organoids, and they are leveraging the science, the space science, that tells us that humans age much more ra rapidly in space due to radiation and microgravity. There's some numbers that go up size 30 times the rate that we age on Earth. And so they have created this environment. It's fully automated. They can try treatments. They use microgravity and radiation to accelerate aging and try various drugs and so on. That's pretty exciting stuff. We have Alden, which is Alden Scientific, which is a company with an amazing team out of MIT. I think Dimitri mentioned uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. These guys, uh, and I think you mentioned human avatar. That's what they're doing. Uh, they're basically, they can take someone like me and completely model me through omics, through the history of my diseases, my genetics, and Machine learning can determine the optimum treatment for me, the optimum treatment for my longevity or addressing diseases. So really exciting stuff going on. We're not going to do it without computers. So we talked about turn of the century, Aubrey publishing his Seven Deadly Things in 2002. So coincidentally, we started seeing some real scientific breakthroughs at the turn of the centuries. These are Nobel Prizes. These, this is what defines scientific breakthrough. All of these are for aging-related research. And I don't have the time because Mira already flashed the card at me. Uh, but if you, if you page through these, uh, what we did, we took every, and my partner mostly, uh, because they did this, uh, every, every single uh, of these uh, prizes, uh, what is the treatment? So let's take uh, program cell, cell death. Uh, we use uh, as analytic treatments I mentioned. They use apoptosis mechanism. And then we mapped it to the hallmark. And then uh, some of the companies, and again, you can click on also it's a wealth of information. What do they do? Uh, we have two pages for every every one of these prizes to get, get a little more idea. Uh, so Unity, for example, had an announcement uh, just last year. They were able to successfully treat macular degeneration with their senolytics. So guys, these hallmarks are proving out in the market. And this is just beginning. Uh, and so you can picture this. We have a lot with telomeres. Telomeres lengthens our telomeres. Uh, again, another Nobel Prize. Uh, lots of companies doing cool stuff. And uh, again, I won't have the time, so I'll just page through cellular reprogramming. And some companies here using stem cell, you know, I in, induce pluripotent stem cells to turn our cell, say, to, uh, we mentioned Altos, $3 billion from Yuri Milner and Jeff Bezos. Turn Bio is another cool company. A lot of stuff going on, you can kind of read about it. Autophagy. And uh, it's an interesting one because. Uh, Merck uh, and Moderna. Moderna had an announcement uh, just a little while ago that they cured melanoma. Now, for the first time, guys, this is a very big deal, and I watched the CEO on the news, and he was exuding happiness. This was a big, big moment. And the way they cured it, they, they have a vaccine that trained on the cancer cell. But cancers, uh, cancer cells do this immune privilege. And they can uh, cover themselves with these floating antibodies. But Merck has a drug uh, called Keytruda, which removed those floating antibodies and masked the cancer cells so that Moderna vaccine could reach them. And one of our investments, Nanotix, is an amazing company. They have little nanos that can go in and do this much more effectively. So they are now going into trials with three major US hospitals, uh, Mayo Clinic, uh, and Mass General Hospital, and uh, forget the other one, but they're going to be uh, looking with their nanos that can remove inflammatory particles of these floating an antibodies that cover up the cancers and senescent cells. Uh, so that's amazing, new, completely new type of medicine. So a lot of exciting stuff. I'm just going to end saying, look, there's a lot going on. These are all the journals just dedicated to just longevity biotech. You can click on all of them. You have obviously a lot of books coming out. Um, 
and um, we have um, longevity portals on the web, and of course we have conferences like this one, and thank you Ilya and, and your whole team for organizing it, especially in Israel. Please do more so I can come back, and thank you very much for having me.